come to you and we plead the merits of the blood of Jesus who died on that cross for us. That we may be forgiven, saved, and ready for heaven. Lord Jesus, this morning, would you walk among us? Would you walk up and down the aisles, Lord? May your presence fill this room. The very crash in the children's church, may they be conscious of Jesus. Pray today, Lord, may you receive all the honor and the glory and the praise because you alone are worthy. And Lord, we pray for this list and the unspoken request, Lord, in the hearts that are crown ideal, Lord. Touch every brother, every sister, every loved one. Touch every one of them. Remember those dear people in Nigeria, pastors and churches that have lost their leaders. I ask you, Lord, today, touch your people. Build your church, Lord. No matter what the gates of Baylor do, build your church, Lord, and glorify your name. Bless us, Lord, as we gather around your table. Oh, Lord, may we be conscious that you're here with us. And we'll always give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For you alone are worthy. And everybody say it. night in which the Lord Jesus was betrayed by a friend. He took bread. And when he had given thanks and blessed it and broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this is my body given for you. This do remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup and they did something. This cup was the new covenant shed for many. My blood for the remission of sins. For so often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you to show the Lord's death till he comes. Or for that among them will examine themselves that they eat not this bread or drink this cup in an unworthy fashion. Maybe never do that, Lord. Maybe never do that, sister. Maybe never do that, church. May we always honor him, worship him, thank him and praise him for all that he's done for us. On the cross, the empty tomb, and even today as he stands at the throne of grace praying for each one of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He took bread, a symbol of his body, for you and me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. He also took the cup. Again, it's a symbol of his precious blood shed for you and me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't you love them? You love the Lord Jesus. So much.
Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, nor neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. And here in the King James it's homosexuals or effeminate, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says this, and such were some of you, but you're washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's a hard reading in these days, but it's God's word. Can I hear an amen? amen? Father, bless your word to all of our hearts today. Inspire us to look back and then to look forward. In Jesus' name. If I had a time for this message, it's really simple. Such were some of you. Such were some of you. Paul, no punches pulled, no blanks fired, no frills attached, no apologies made. The Apostle Paul proclaimed the undiluted truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ boldly, fearlessly, and passionately. And in these words, I see three things in our text. Number one, verses 9 and 10, I see a grave reality. Number two and verse 11, a grim reminder. And number three, verse 11 still, a glorious redemption. A glorious redemption. A grave reality. Paul declares, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Folks, God's word is the truth. And it's not to be tampered with, diluted, or perverted. And God's servants must of necessity preach the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us God. Here is the truth. God's word. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Did you hear that? The unrighteous. That's the wicked or the sinful or the lawless or one not living right before God. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Of God. But Paul continues. He says, Be not deceived, neither fornicators. That word is pornos. It's where we get pornography from. It's sex before marriage. Idolaters as idol worshippers, anything that is worshipped before God. Paul prophesied in the last days, men and women would become lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, and lovers of money. Adulterers, that's illicit sex outside the marriage bond. Effeminate, that means soft or camp, those who have lost their manhood. And as I said in the King James, and most, most, most translation, they say homosexual. You can look at that yourself. Abusers of themselves with mankind, sodomites. Nor thieves, that's stealers or pilferers. Covetous, an unsatiable desire for more and more. Greedy and grabbers. Drunkards, speaks for itself. Methos, drunken or intoxicated or alcoholics, revilers, slanderers, who speak negatively, abusively, hurtfully, a critic, a cynic, a skeptic, a hate the world, extortioners, robbers, swindlers, cheaters. What a catalog. And the Apostle John in Revelation 21, when he saw the new heaven and earth, he also spoke about those who wouldn't be in the kingdom. In verse 4 he says, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there shall be no more Death, sorrow, crying, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne, behold, said, I will make all things new. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. 
and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly or the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Which is the second thing. Brothers and sisters, these are catalogs of people that need saved. That need saved. Like we once were. Chastity was virtually unheard of in Corinth. Their great temple of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, had a thousand prostitutes. Unnatural affection was rampant in Greek and Roman life, and dare I say it, in church life as well in Corinth. Alternative lifestyles were common. That's why Paul wrote two letters to this church, declaring firmly yet lovingly, those who live accordingly shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's God's word, not mine. Jesus himself declared in John 3, except a man or a woman be born again, they cannot see and they cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And in John chapter 10, he said, I am the door. By me, if any man or woman enters in, they shall be saved. Peter also says in Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation and any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Sadly, preachers avoid these issues, knowing the repercussions. Yet little do they know if they preach the truth in love, God will honor them and their churches. Peter declares in 2 Peter 3 and 9, It is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come. To repentance. If ever a congregation needed to hear the truth, it was the church in Corinth. And Paul saw these things as a grave reality. But also, Paul made it more personal because, number two, it was a grim reminder. Don't miss this. A grim reminder. He says, And such were some of you. Such were some of you past tense. Paul declared to these believers, such were some of you. The living Bible says there was a time that some of you were just like that. He was talking to the converted, reminding them where they came from. Paul says, don't look down on these folks. You, you and I were like them. You were part of them. We lived among them. Can I hear an Amen. PCN, brothers and sisters, before you shake your head, tut tut and disgust, or look down your nose on such people, let me remind you what Paul said, such were some of you. Whether you agree with me or not, whether you love me or loathe me, the truth is, you and I were in that catalogue of sinners. We can't condemn anyone, for we once were the same. Remember all of sin, including you and I, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Can you understand why Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged? Why? Because Psalm 130 says, Lord, if you should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Such were some of you. What a grim reminder. Let us never forget it. Folks, today our society is sick. Probably more sick than Sodom and Gomorrah. More sick than Matt's day and Paul's day. Put the news on. Read the local papers. The depravity of sin and sinful nature is all around us. In fact, it has reached an all-time low on a global scale. Nothing shocks me anymore. I've heard and seen it all. Human nature can be so vile, selfish, depraved, vicious, perverted. It contaminates everything godly from social life, family life and church life. Jesus said, he said this, as the days of Noah were. He also says, as it was in the days of Lot, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. What's that mean? It means the same sins then will be the same sins now before his glorious return. Even in church life, 
Judges 21, verse 25. In those days, everyone did that which was right in his own eyes. It's the same today. I've never met as many professing Christians doing things now that they'd never dream of doing when they first got saved. It's okay to drink, it's okay to take drugs, it's okay to have sex before marriage, it's okay to smoke not only cigarettes but cannabis and weed. It's okay to gamble and do the lottery, live in an alternative lifestyle, have extra moral affairs to float from church to church, chase the latest thrills and chills and not be committed anywhere. The feel-good factor has entered the church. What can your church do for me, pastor? What can I get out of it? It's all about me, me, me in these last days. Sadly, the same people can't cope with life. They're high one minute, depressed the next. Like the children of Israel of old, they're saved yet they're miserable. Saved yet stuck. Delivered yet still wanting to go back to Egypt. Set free yet still enslaved by old habits. Going round in circles in the wilderness. And they wonder why their family don't want their Christianity, don't believe they've changed, and don't want what they're offering. Preacher, someone said, don't preach about sin. Don't preach about conviction of sin or repentance from sin or surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Hold it. According to God's word, the preacher must preach what the people need to hear, not what they want to hear. Not everybody wants to hear this. What they need to hear in churches today is the undiluted, uncompromised, unchanging gospel of Jesus Christ who loves the sinner but hates the sin. The same gospel that saves sinners, that lifts a lost soul from darkness into light, from bondage into freedom and eventually from earth to glory in heaven. Through the sacrifice, death, and resurrection of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. That's why Paul could say, This is a faithful say and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I was the worst. Brother and sister, sadly, too many professing believers have lost their sense of God consciousness, sinfulness, holiness truthfulness, faithfulness, righteousness, and thoughtfulness for others in church and outside it. We must guard our testimonies. The testimony of this church and your personal testimony from the sins of the flesh and that old carnal nature and the sins of the spirit. And that's why Paul gave us here in our reading a grim reminder such were some of you. When I look back at my life and lifestyle, I literally cringe at what I got up to and what I did. My stomach turns of how I could live so low, sink so deep and behave so badly. But praise God, Paul's grim reminder doesn't end there. He ends reminding us Number three, that we have a glorious redemption. A glorious redemption. Such were some of you, but, say but, everybody say but. But, such were some of you, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Would you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Did you hear that, brother and sister? Such were, not such are. It's past. That's your old life. Such were, some of you, not such are. Second Corinthians 5 and 70. Therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, they're a new person. They're a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become you. What a difference Jesus has made in our lives. Don't get excited. It's called amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I see. But the truth is, no change. 
no conversion. If there's no change, then there's no conversion. There's got to be a change in your life. When someone becomes a Christian, they're not the same anymore. The old is gone and the new has come. The old needs to go. You can't hold on to the old and live in the new. It doesn't work. You've got to repent of the old in order to live in the new. There's got to be a change in your life from the inside out. Paul reminds us, such were some of you. And then he says this, but you were washed. Washed in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood this morning. But you are sanctified. That word sanctified means set apart by and for God's use. But you were justified. And so many Irish preachers said, just as if I never sinned. Your sins are washed away in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Such were some of you. People's church would know that we were once in that catalog of people. And we don't judge them because we were pulled out of it. I know what I was pulled out of. That was our past. Everybody has a past. But Jesus dealt with our past at Calvary on the cross where he died for our sins. But more than that, he has set us apart for secret use. But even more than that, he's given us something to sing about and shout about. We're saved, we're sanctified, and we're serving the King. What a privilege. David testified in Psalm 40. One to three. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. Anybody remember that pit? If you remember that pit, lift your hand. Out of the merry clay. Remember the merry clay? You, were, you couldn't get your feet out. He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. The hymn writer penned it this way. He took me from a fearful pit and from the merry clay. He put my feet upon a rock and established my way. He put a new song in my mouth, our God to magnify. Many shall see it and shall fear. And the Lord rely. What a grave reality. And it surely was. What a grim reminder. And it's good to be reminded. But what a glorious redemption. Jesus saves, heals, and delivers. Brother and sister, the living Bible says there was a time when some of you were just like that. But now, say but now. But now, your sins are washed away. And you're set apart for God. And he has accepted you because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God have done for you. Friend, what is it for you? Is it a grave reality? You're still living in it. Is it a grim reminder? You want to leave it behind. Is it a glorious redemption? You want Jesus to give you a new life and a new future. Unsafe friend, let Jesus deal with your past. Wash away all your sins. Save your soul and set you apart for holy use. And celebrate your glorious redemption with the angels in heaven and the people's church in Maui today. Maybe you're a backslider. Have you drifted back into your old lifestyle, old habits? Old sins, old haunts. Joyless believer, do you want your joy back? Cold Christian, do you want the fire of God back inside your heart and soul? Indifferent brother and sister, are you willing to swallow your pride and surrender again to the Lordship of Jesus? Such were some of you. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Listen to this. And you 
shall glorify me. I can remember standing in the Merville Inn on the 24th of March, 1979, with a paint in my hand, looking around everybody. Everywhere was a mess. People were messed. So was I. I was part of it. I couldn't look down on anybody. But I remember looking up to the ceiling and said, God, there's got to be a better life than this. My life's a mess. I've already spent three years in the maze. And I heard a voice inside my head. Must be a better life than this. And I believe he said to me, Son, you know there is. And if you put your trust in me, I will glorify my name through your life. And the next night I surrendered my life to Jesus. And I want to tell you something. I have led more people in my life to Jesus. That has brought honor and glory to the one who lifted me out of the mire. I have been privileged to pastor this church. I love this church. I love this people. But I thank God that He lifted me and He saw fit to use somebody like me to bring honor and glory to His name. And I want to leave this with you. He wants to hear you calling on him. He wants to deliver you today out of your trouble. And he wants to use you to glorify his name. And the question is, will you let him? Will you let him? Will you let him? Will you let him do? I thank God I did. And I've had the greatest adventure that I could ever have. Amen. May God bless you. Such were some of you. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. In the name of Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. What a privilege. I waited for the Lord, my God, and patiently prepared at length to me. He did. I, I 
Bless your word today. Bless your people today. And bless your name today. Lord, as we leave to go home, continue to speak, Lord. Continually touch, Lord. Draw people to yourself. Remember tonight, Father, as we gather, Lord, around the gospel service of life. We ask you for the Lord and they call to prayer. We pray for the baptismal service of Wednesday night. Lord. Bless those who are going through the waters, Lord. Lord, may we bring honor and glory to your name this week in everything we say and everything we do. Separate us with your blessing, Father. May we leave exalting Jesus in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. God bless you.